welcome, welcome to ProductCon. Uh, it seems like it is going to be an incredible day. You have a great lineup uh, set up for yourselves today. I thought I'd start uh, our conference, uh, not surprisingly, uh, by talking a little bit about uh, artificial intelligence. We're gonna talk about it in the light of Walmart and everything that we're doing to better enable our customers and associates and help bring amazing solutions to life for them. But before I do, uh, for those of you who don't know me, it's great to meet you. Hi, I'm John Alpernis, and uh, I lead product management for Walmart US, and that's across uh, you know, financial services, health and wellness, e-commerce, associate tools, merchant tools, and the like. And what's been so much fun about working with my teams is how we get to think about big picture solutions that cut across these areas. And nothing could be more exciting than the advances that we're seeing in artificial intelligence and how we can apply that today. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that in the context of um, what we're doing for our customers, how we're bringing customer solutions to life, what we're doing for our associates, how we're using artificial intelligence to give them effectively superpowers to do their job even better, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about how we're using this internally to produce better tools for our product managers so that we can do our job uh, from a day-to-day -day basis. So Walmart's approach to technology is a little bit unique. Um, as, as was said earlier, I've spent my, my career in Silicon Valley in product management, leaned into technology, but Walmart is, as you see on the slides behind me, a little bit, the, our approach to technology is a little bit different. We see technology from a different perspective. We want to leverage technology to enrich our customer and our associate lives. We're not gonna build technology just for technology's sake, but really, and you can see it in the, in the words behind me, what we say when people ask us, what is Walmart? Is Walmart a tech company? Is it a retail company? Well, we're a little bit different. We are a people-led, tech-powered, omni-channel retailer dedicated to helping people save money to live better. We're people-led and we always will people be people-led and we'll talk about that throughout today. But more and more we are tech-powered and we're taking advantage of all of the great um, innovations that are out there to help our people do even better in their jobs. And that last task, uh, tagline goes all the way back to the early days of Walmart when Sam Walton founded the company with the mission of helping people save money so that they can live better. For those of you who don't know about Walmart, let me dig in a little bit deeper to kind of bring some of our experiences to life. As I mentioned, saving people money to live better is very much core to the Walmart ethos. It's our mission, it's our purpose. We are known for being people-led. We always will be. Our people are probably our strongest asset. In the United States alone, we have 1.6 million associates and 4,600 stores. It's not just our strength, but it's also our competitive advantage and our differentiator. We talk, we, we call our employees associates, all of our employees, whether you're Doug, you're John Ferner, my boss, you're myself, you're an employee, you're an employee in a store or in the supply chain, all of us are associates because it, it strengthens two things, the power of the collective, the power of the group of all of these individuals, and our desire to be here to serve our customers. We, we, we make this, in case anybody's uh, uh, confused at all about how we're using associates, Nike does a similar thing. Nike talks about all of their employees as athletes. So in our world, all of our employees are associates. Now, as much as we are people-led, we are more and more tech-powered than ever before. And this might come as a little bit of a surprise for those of you uh, who aren't as close to Walmart. We're leaning on technology to create delightful experiences, to bring to life even more intelligent operations for our associates. We believe that technology augments what we're doing. It doesn't replace humans, it doesn't replace our associates. But technology, and in particular technology like artificial intelligence, gives us the power to deliver what customers want, 
when they want it, and how they want it. And ultimately, our goal is to provide everyday low prices to hundreds of millions of products in our assortment. And the way we do that is through focusing on everyday low costs. So every time we, we get an uh, advantage with cost, or every time we're able to return that value back to a customer, we do so, which creates this flywheel, builds trust, trust, trust with our customers. They understand that any time they shop with Walmart, they're getting everyday low prices. They come back time and time again. I'm sure you'll hear a lot more about the flywheels that are created in business uh, throughout today. We believe, ultimately, that these assets of being people-led and infusing everything that we do with technology best positions Walmart for success in the future. We believe that we are the best positioned retailer to bring tech advances to life for our customers so that we can solve uh, the kind of problems they have today. Now, no surprise, especially in 2024, but this has been true throughout my career, customer expectations are changing, behaviors are changing, they're changing faster than ever before, and as we release and, and announce and bring to life new and new bits of technology, whether it's AI, assistance, you name it, customer expectations keep rising. They keep, uh, they keep changing. In the world of retail, customers are no longer just satisfied spear fishing for the specific product that they want. We're starting to see it in the queries they bring us as well. Customers are looking to platforms like Walmart to solve more complex tasks. At the same time that their expectations are evolving in that way, the world's becoming more complicated. So we know that technology can deliver bigger expectations for us so that we, we weave uh, into our lives uh, more and more, comp we, 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 we multitask more. We think about shopping and solving these tasks while we're taking our kids to school, while we're preparing the talk that we're giving here at ProductCon. AI is not just empowering our customers, but it is increasing their expectations tenfold. And they want these systems, customers want these systems to be able to do more for them. So at Walmart, we're using a bit of a bold vision. We're using the vision of a shopping assistant to kind of lead us forward. We talk about assistants all the time in the world of AI, and I know we're just in our early days of bringing that to life. So we use it as a North Star to say that if we can make all of our experiences more fluid, more frictionless, and more delightful for our customers, ultimately solving their problems as we would if we were an assistant in the cloud, that will not only give us the right endpoint, but it'll give us all of these stops along the way that will deliver real value to our customers. We know that retailers who deliver against this vision will ultimately lead because we'll give customers what they want in an incredibly frictionless way. So I wanna talk through some of those examples. The first thing that we're doing is on the search side of the world. We're leveraging AI in two uh, distinct ways to improve our search experiences uh, fairly fundamentally. Now I've worked across the industry and I've worked in search for many, many years. And I've had the privilege to work at places like Google on teams that, that brought product search to life. And I think one of the challenges when you're bringing, when you're working on a product like search at Walmart is, is the expectations out there. Google has been delivering against this for 10 plus years. They've had hundreds of engineers to be able to build something like a product search experience. And Walmart, you know, we, we don't quite have that scale. So for a long time, I thought it would be difficult to get to the kind of quality of search experiences that customers expect. And then along comes artificial intelligence, comes the large language models, Gen AI, that we've been playing with. And to me, it seemed like uh, uh, an incredible unlock ahead of us, and it has been. So we've been leveraging large language models and AI to improve the core, the core foundations of search. We've used it to improve how we think about type ahead, spell, uh, uh, spell correction, simple things. We've also used it to help us understand word entities. When can we break things apart? When can we not? What are brands that are relevant? When are we looking at types of products versus brands? All of that has increased our search, relevance, uh, search relevancy significantly in the past year or so. 
And we're seeing that in our engagement and retention results from customers too. At the same time that we are using AI to improve the very foundation, the very core of search, we're also using it to, um, to extend, to up-level what we're able to do in search. And we're seeing the response from our customers. So customers are now able to ask questions like, what do I need to throw a Super Bowl watch party? Or I want all of the best products so that I can have uh, the most fantastic Halloween party on the block. I'm not just searching for a Halloween costume, but I want costumes, I want decorations, I want, uh, I want the best punch bowl, I want candy buckets. So into the core of Walmart search, we've built this ability to understand more complex queries and break them down and then return to customers this entire set of results that would make this experience better. So if you go back to what I said earlier about expectations growing, tasks becoming more complex, we're able to meet our customers where they are by responding to these, these more complex tasks directly without pushing that cognitive load back, uh, back into our customers' hands. But as I said earlier, while we are here to serve our customers, perhaps our greatest asset is our associates. And we're leveraging AI across the board to help enable our associates as well. We see AI as equipping our associates with advanced tools to help them do their job so much better. AI, as far as Walmart is concerned, is not here to replace people's jobs. It's not here to help reduce our associate uh, headcount. It's here to help us up-level, upskill, and enable our associates across the board. Like I said earlier, our associates are one of our greatest strengths. And I see it in the stores all day long. Customers come up to our associates and they ask the kind of questions that, that almost bewilder me. I think to myself, weird, this associate is working in a store and yet the customer is asking the associate something about a recent movie that's out. We'll talk about some of these examples in a second. So we're trying to figure out how we can help reduce friction for our associates so they can interact with our customers more answering, you know, creating those touch points and answering these more complex questions. All the while, our goal here is to make the job of our associates fun, more enjoyable, frictionless, seamless. So let's talk about how we're bringing this to life across our systems. So for a long time, we have had uh, dozens, if not hundreds, of separate applications that have helped our associates in the stores operate the stores. Some of those applications are you know, web apps or, or mobile apps. Some of the applications are pieces of paper. We would create manual lists. There are binders. There used to be these super thick binders that sat in the back of a Walmart store that associates would go to if they needed information or instruction about something uh, that was happening in the store. All of this now has been pulled together, all of these discrete applications as well as these nuggets of information have pulled, been pulled together into a platform, a singular application that we call Me at Walmart. Me at Walmart is deployed to our 1.6 million associates and it's not just a platform for them to get access to all of these tools and information. But as we're layering large language models throughout those tools, as we're leaning in on AI, as we're building a data platform underneath, it helps us connect through these applications so that our associates can ask more complex questions of those tools and better help the customer. Just a couple examples. Recently, I was in a Walmart here in the Bay Area, and I watched a customer in the grocery section looking for a specific brand of cookie. The cookie was clearly out of stock. It wasn't there on the shelf. She called an associate over and asked her, do you know when you're going to get more of this particular brand of, of cookie? The customer definitely answered the question. She answered the question because she was able to lean into, to, to utilize me at and effectively ask our platform in an assistant form, that same question. 
and it turns out that the cookie is on its way. In fact, it's being unloaded in the back right now. A truck just dropped it off. So we've been able to now connect our supply chain, status of products in our supply chain, the inventory we have in the back room, all the way to the front to the, to, uh, to the inventory that we have on, on the store shelves. While we've had the information in the past, because it's been locked in these silos, it's been so much more difficult for associates to pull out. If you'll see, what we're doing here, and I'm absolutely amazed by the progress we've made. We're flying a plane as fast as possible, as, as, as fast as humanly possible. We're driving amazing amounts of customer experience and revenue day in and day out. And we're having to retrofit how we think about data, platforms, and artificial intelligence into these technology stacks that we've had for years. And we are unlocking value in just amazing ways. Another example, um, I'm a, a, a toy fan. I particularly love Lego. And I was in the toy aisle just checking out the newest Lego sets, and I saw another customer come up to an associate and ask the type of question that I think is pretty common out of Walmart. There's so much trust between our customers and associates. The customer was asking the associate, you know, I'm looking for a new Lego set. I think it's based on a movie or a video game, but I don't know which. Can you help me find one? Because I'm looking for one for my niece for their birthday. I wasn't even sure what she was referring to. But in the back and forth, it turns out she was looking for the new Fortnite sets, which luckily we had. They were on the shelf, and, and the associate was able to show the customer some suggestions. So again, we have built in real world uh, knowledge through LLMs into the MIAT platform and linked it up with our own product inventory, information about those products, availability, pricing, and the like, so that again, our associates are able to do their job much quicker, more seamlessly, easier, so that they can dedicate their time and what they're doing to the customer, not running back and forth trying to dig up this information, going to a million different systems trying to figure this all out. All of this has been possible because we've thought about how to build this into a platform, we've thought about how to connect that with data underneath, and then ultimately using the interface of, um, of an assistant, of questions, prompts, we put that at the top to basically enable these integrations that we've built. As you can tell, data is at the very foundation of so many of these experiences. Walmart's a 60 plus year old company and we have been aggregating and accumulating data for a long, long time. A friend of mine is the chief economist at Walmart and he is thrilled about the scale of our data sets because the type of insights that he can bring forward are like nothing that he's ever seen before. But at the same time, for a 60 year old company, that data tends to be a little bit locked in silos. We have pools, we have puddles, we have thousands upon thousands of databases and millions of tables. So as a product manager, if I wanna get at some insights about what's working in my products, what isn't, what are customers doing on my platform, what, um, what type of uh, behaviors are we seeing, it's, it's pretty difficult for me to do that in a very raw fashion. So we've leaned on uh, many, many data scientists, analysts, and the product teams work closely with these data friends to answer these questions. The back and forth become a little ridiculous. We ask a question, data scientist says, no problem, I can figure out the answer to that, goes away, comes back, says, here's the answer. Okay, that's great, but I'd like the data sliced slightly differently, or I'd like to look at it from this dimension or with this metric instead. No problem. Let me go away and come back a couple of days later with those answers. In order to be able to run faster and to really enable our product management team, our product managers need the ability to, to dig into the data themselves, to be able to query it so that they can get some of these insights before you go and spend the time with the data uh, scientist or analyst. So this vision, this you know, I've had this vision for a long time about if we can have all of this data, even if it isn't perfectly cleaned and aggregated, what if we were to put that data 
alongside a singular AI model, a large language model of sorts, so that on the other side, we can effectively interface through that model into that data with natural language type queries. This is exactly what we're building at Walmart with the enterprise data platform. It has required and will continue to require some amount of data foundations and data cleanup, but the magic of what we're seeing in this new world that's, that's being created right now is it doesn't have to be perfect. AI and large language models help the product managers understand what's the canonical data or table for this type of data. These columns or these rows are not human readable. Can you help give me an explanation of what this data is? And then ultimately, we're working towards this place where the assistant that we are building on top of our enterprise data platform will enable me to ask questions of the data itself and over time, we're looking forward to the ability for that platform and that assistant to actually intuit and bring to life insights and feed that to, uh, to, our, to our product managers and our business friends offline, asynchronously. It's, it's early in this journey for us. If I think back, we started uh, this journey on data about a year, maybe a year and a half ago, and we started it on a, uh, with a conversation between me and John Ferner, who runs Walmart US. And he posited to me, hey, with everything happening in the world of AI, we should just be able to have it answer questions for us, find those insights and present them to us. We shouldn't even have to think about it. And a year, year and a half ago, I told John he was crazy. There was no way that AI was that good that it was gonna be able to do, uh, that it was gonna be able to bring those solutions to life. But I hope you're all keeping an eye because the pace that AI is changing means ideas that went, that were crazy a year, year and a half ago are now very doable. So the last point that I wanna to make to all of you today is please continue to lean into the AI space, skate to where the puck is going, not to where it is already. And you're gonna be um, not just blown away with what you're able to do, but your customers your users are gonna be thrilled with the solutions that you're delivering because their expectations are gonna to rise to that challenge anyway. I wanna take a moment uh, to thank you all. Uh, we covered a whole variety of different topics today. We talked a little bit about who Walmart is, our unique and different approach to technology, which I'm really excited about. How Walmart is uh, always and will always be people-led, but how technology is unlocking and leveraging even more superpowers from our associates. We talked about how we're improving the customer experience across search and beyond. And then we finished with this example of the enterprise data platform where we're bringing data to life for my product management team and beyond in ways that makes our jobs not just easier, but delightful. You've got an incredible, incredible lineup today. So many great speakers. I'm really all excited that you're all here, excited for the day that you're about to have, and I wanna thank you so much for your time and your patience this morning. Enjoy the day, guys.